Instagram time! Instagram? No! Uh, Instagram! Yes! And we have a game plan. A game plan. One, we're gonna choose the number of classes. Why? Because we're trying to take this quantitative data and make it categorical data or qualitative data so that we can graph it just like we did back then. So we need to partition our data up into what they call classes or categories. Now, how are you going to choose the number of categories? Say, you have like 24 elements in your data set and you're trying to make a histogram so that you can get a picture of the data. Well, what are we going to do? We're going to partition those 24 up into how many? If we chose 24 classes, then our data wouldn't have a chance to accumulate. It would be spread much, much too far. If we chose just one class, then our data is going to accumulate in that one category and it's going to be 24 tall. But we don't want that. We want a representative sample. So you're going to use your intuition to choose the classes. There is a way with logarithms, but let's just do away with that. Well, with 24 elements, you're probably going to choose four or maybe five. That'll give a chance for columns to be high enough to tell a story, but not low enough to not say enough. So, we choose the number of classes. After we do that, it's an art form. Yeah, we're gonna define the class width so that we can have an evenly spaced categories so that each category has the same width. Now, this is the right way to create a histogram. Your book might do it another way. And hopefully I can make this video robust enough to be book independent. But for now, we're doing it the right way. We define our class width by taking the high element, subtracting off the low element, and dividing it by the number of classes. The classes was chosen in part one. Next, you're going to define the classes. This is going to, this is going to go towards your frequency table, which is the next part. You're going to create a frequency table, and after that, you're going to draw your histogram. I gathered some data from a class, and here it is. Not under the defined class, but from a class of mine, a stat class. We're talking about how long it takes them to get from home to school, and here we go, because I'm about to take you to school on these histograms. First, we want to define the number of classes. I have 24 elements, and they seem to be spread kind of far. So I'm going to choose five so that I can have a lot of categories, a lot relative to 24. You could have chosen four or six, but I'm choosing five. Mm. Yeah, math by fives. Here we go. We want to find our class width. That's our high value, or 65. That was somebody who lived quite far. And then subtract off our low value of 9. That was somebody who lived in the dorms. And then we're going to divide it by the number of classes, or 5. If we pound that out, we're going to get 11.2. What is this? This is the width of my interval, so that they're all equally spaced. And now it's time to create our or define our classes and here's how we do it we start at the low value 9 and what do we do we add the class width which was 11.2 so then we can go back over there 9 plus 11.2 is 20.2 now I take that as my endpoint here 20.2 and then I'm gonna add that class width to it again 11.2 and when I do I get 31.4 sure and then I'm gonna use that 31.4 over there and I'm gonna subtract off or add to it 11.2 my class width which is gonna get me 42.6 then I take that 42.6 and then I'm gonna go and I'm gonna whoa whoa there I'm gonna add 11.2 and get 53.6 now if you make these histograms the right way it should start at the lowest value and end at the highest value and that's what's happening here 53 point that should be 8 plus 11.2 is 65. Starts at the low, ends at the high. All the widths are the same length. Some books, all right, here's where we're trying to make a book independent. Some books use nice numbers because they're pretty. Aww. So we could go and we could redefine this thing as pretty. We could say 9 to 20. 
And this one, the, net, the first number that can be included in there in our discrete data set is 21, 2. And the last number that can be included in there is 31. If you didn't know that your book was doing this, it is. So then, here, that's 32 is the nearest value in there. And then that's gonna go up to 42, ooh. And then, 43 is the first value in there, and 50, Three is the last value in there, all right. And then down here, 54, two, 65. But these don't all have the same amount of elements in each interval, so I don't like it that way. Is it pretty? Uh-huh. Anyways, we're gonna go now, after we've defined the classes, we're going to create our frequency distribution. And that's how this is happening here. Let's ignore Is that how I spell ignore? I don't know. Let's ignore the pretty and go with this now because this is the right way to do it. So then we look at our data. With our data up there, we're gonna count the number of elements in each one of the classes. I've separated those 24 into two columns so that we can count them easy. This is the category. And this is the frequency. All right, so in the 9 to 20.2 category, we have 12 people commuting in that fashion. And then from the 20.2 to the 31.4, we're gonna have nine people. All right, from 34 to 42.6, we have one, and then looks like we have another one, and another one, because I'm using that data up there, and I'm placing them in them categories right there. And now I have enough to make my frequency histogram. So to make my histogram, I need to use my frequency table. And when I'm using that frequency table, I want to put it in a graph. And when I'm putting it into a graph, that action is a histogram. What's the important part about the histogram? The bars touch. Now I'm over here. I'm looking in this interval. Man, from 9 to 20.2. How many were there? There were 12 people who commuted between within 20 minutes. So I draw a line here at 12. Boom. And then from 20.2 to 31.4, I had nine. Fine. So that's right here. Clear. And then from 34 to 42 and all the way on out, I had one person who commuted in those intervals. So we can draw those graphs like that. Oh boy. And let's just connect these lines so they're all pretty. Boom. And I've just created my histogram. Man. Yeah. And what does this story tell? This story tells that most people got there within 31.4 minutes or just under a half hour, and that was most. This is skewed right, which you're gonna know soon, but not too many people came out there. Why? Because a lot of people live in dorms, and it's kind of a local school, so psh, everybody gets in there rather quickly. Bonus round. Yeah! We're gonna go beyond frequency histograms and go to relative frequency histograms. How are we gonna do that? We're gonna find the relative frequency. That's the frequency, can you see that? Divided by the total number. And then that's what's happening here. This is 12 divided by 24, I can do that. That's about 0.5 or 50% of the people. Nine divided by 24, that's uh, about 0.325. Did it in my head. Nah, it's written on my wall. Okay, and then 1 over 24, that's about 0 0.042, or a little more than 4%. 1 over 24 again is 0 0.042, and then 1 over 24 again is 0 0.042. And you may be asking the question, how am I ever going to convert the frequency histogram into a relative frequency histogram? A relative frequency histogram is a histogram where the height represents the relative frequency or percentage proportion of elements. So let me just go and relabel this axi. I'm going to relabel this as, mm, yeah, um, right here. Okay. So this is about 5%, percent, point zero five, and then we'll just go 10 
and 15 and <laughs> not to scale 20 25 this is about 30%, 0.30. Foresight would have done much better on that. And then 35, 36, 40, and boom, 50%. So then I would relabel my heights as percents. More on trying to make this book independent. When you're using the pretty elements, these tick marks, the cutoffs, are going to be the midpoints between those two. What's halfway between 20 and 21? This one here would be 20.5. And this one here is going to be what's ever halfway between 31, 31 and 32. That one would be 31.5. They're using the endpoints and making it all complicated, which is one of the reasons I don't like the histogram that way. That, this, without those, is the right way. Oh, 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 the right stuff. Extra even, oh boy. Some books will ask for the midpoints of the classes. If you're looking for the midpoint of the classes, you're using the nice stuff. Midpoint is the average of the two. So if I was taking the midpoint of this, it's the average of the two. It's 20 plus nine divided by two, which is gonna get you 29, 14.4, 14.5, pardon. And then what would that be? That would be the category label that they would put here. And then you could find the midpoint of that and put that there. But that's all just too complicated. Stick to the game plan. The game plan.